So hi everybody, I'm Caitlin. I lead the grade 11 girls with my sister Hillary. And I just got married to Jordan. He's my WikiHow game partner in crime. Uh, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about something that God's been teaching me over the last few months, but really he started during the beginnings of this like two years ago. So in 2019, I was living in Lethbridge, going to university when my small group started uh, a book study on a book by Haley Morgan called Preach to Yourself. Now, essentially, the author breaks down a couple of the common lies that followers of Jesus will often tell themselves. And there was this one that the Holy Spirit seemed to highlight on the page for me. It was called the I can't do this lie, which is a lie that has to do with capacity, ability, and what I'd eventually discover would be pride. Uh, but the thing with being a university student who's working part time and doing theater and taking classes and the list goes on is that although God seemed to be showing me the fact that I had some misplaced identity issues, I really didn't take the time to dig into the capacity lie that I was believing to the depth that it was actually like controlling my life. I was too busy with my life to dig deep enough. So we're going to flash forward two years. You all know we're living in a pandemic. And all of a sudden, my busy schedule, like so many others, had waned. And this little I can't do this lie started to get out of control in my thoughts. I'd hear things in my head um, like, you don't do anything. You're a loser. You're not going to get anywhere in your life and the worst one, which was you're a failure. Um, and it almost seemed like these thoughts started accumulating, paralyzing me and swirling out of control without even realizing that it was happening. Um, and I got to a point where I was like honestly afraid to be by myself for longer than a couple of hours because I wouldn't know where my thoughts would go and how de devastating their effect would be. Um, so there came a point this past fall when Holy Spirit started putting it on my heart that I needed to be <clears throat> engaging in a more active and intimate prayer life with God. Um, now this, this is huge. This is huge people. Um, God didn't leave me in this place of like devastation in my thought life, but I did need to say yes to the, ch and change some things about my emotion, my emotional and thought life. Um, in saying yes to his call to greater and more intentional relationship through prayer. Um, so I needed to say yes to God's call in order for things to st start to shift. So um, in Romans 12 verse two, it says, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that's exactly what God was calling me to do and is still doing. Uh, he was calling me to undergo mind transformation and it's hard. Um, part of this journey of prayer was <clears throat> breaking down the thoughts behind my thoughts. Uh, I entered this period of pruning. I like to call it where through the Holy Spirit, God began like stripping these parts of my identity that weren't of him. So phrases like you're a loser and you're a failure were so painful to me because I was putting so much of my worth on what I could get done in a day or how much how much my life would be valuable in the long run based upon what I had accomplished. The reality is that I'd been putting way more weight and identity in how I spent my time in the way I spent it than I realized. And when the world came to a halt during COVID, so many of those things that I was doing fell away and left me to face what the Holy Spirit had began stirring in my heart two years ago during my book study. Now, here's the kicker though. I couldn't stop and I can't stop at just coming to the conclusion that my value and worth isn't determined by what I do. Because the thing is, I knew that, like I, I know this in my mind, but it didn't stop the like mind spirals that would happen and still take place 
particularly in loneliness. The stuff I knew in my mind wasn't like impressed upon my heart and soul. So I had to let the redemptive love of God flood my soul and reflect on where my value is found. And this actually leads and led to me not thinking about myself at all, but instead reflecting with praise on the character of God. Because our lives are about living for the glory of God and not just like figuring out our emotional lives and tying them up pretty in a bow so that we can live more comfortably. Um, because if that's what it was about, what would set us apart from the rest of the world as Jesus followers? So practically speaking, this uh, led to me like praying the Psalms, which has been a huge game changer, especially the last five Psalms that Andrew talked about in the fall. They're all really like praise focused and have helped me navigate taking my eyes off of myself and putting them back on God. So I wanted to end this little tale by saying that the Lord is for you. You are valuable because he died for you and he bled out not um, just for you, but for everybody. And that was like a huge shift for me, taking the focus off of myself and focusing on King Jesus, who sits at the right hand of God, who is sovereign and just and holy and who loves you. So um, the things of this world, they're hard, but they really do, to quote that like classic psalm or classic hymn, they start to become strangely dim in the light of God's glory and grace. Um, and sometimes the things of the world, yeah, they feel really heavy and, and horrible. And I'm starting to learn that that's just another call back into his presence. Welcome back to Youth Foothills Youth. I'm so glad that you've decided to tune on. Even though we're on Zoom, I think we're going to have fun tonight. Uh, we have some special things planned, so stay tuned to the end and we'll talk about that. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Jason and I am the youth intern until the end of the school year. So I hope that we get to know each other a bit better. Maybe at some point we'll be able to play dodgeball or something because I would love that. Now, if you've been journeying along with us through the month of January, you know we've been talking about the practice of Sabbath. And this week is our last week on this practice. So it's our practical night. So a recap on what the Sabbath is. The Sabbath means to stop. In a world that's telling us to go faster, try harder, be stronger, the Sabbath says stop and rest. Uh, in this act of stopping, we choose to take a stand against culture and stand firm in the truth that Jesus is Lord over all else. We recenter on Jesus when we stop and trust that he provides. If you're feeling exhausted, feeling like you can't go through even tonight, tomorrow, let alone the rest of the week, you're not alone. And Jesus knows that. And he wants to provide you with a rest that cuts deep to your soul. See, we've talked about how in the Bible, Jesus rested. That there's places in scripture where we read that he went up the mountaintop and prayed until it got dark. And he was there with his father and he was resting in that. And Jesus wants us to do that too. You see, the things that typically provide rest for us or that we go to to provide rest are things like Netflix or Instagram, which I'm guilty of staying up late into the night thinking that I'm getting more rest by the more time I spend on it, only to wake up the next morning deeply regretting my decision. It makes me more tired than it did before. And it also is a form for me of pushing my troubles away. But Jesus promises a rest that is true, a rest that actually makes us feel rested when we're done with it. Uh, and in that, we're able to bring our troubles to him for the end of the week. We've been centering around a passage in Matthew. Uh, it's in Matthew 11, verse 28, and it says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus is where we find rest and he is the place that we can go to when the world feels like it's too much to face. And Parker shared last week uh, that on the Sabbath we are to do the things that bring us rest. And he defined it in two ways. Uh, restful things are things that actually bring us rest and inspire worship in us. So I'm not a great guitar player. 
but I really enjoy worshiping God through guitar. And I find it really restful to practice a new skill, to take time just jamming out to some music and having a good time, doing something that I usually don't have time for. It allows me to worship God in a new way, and I find rest in that. So Sabbath is our opportunity to say no to the chaos and the rush of the world around us. Parker said this, and I love this line, Sabbath is your all-out offense against the busyness going on around you. And he said that if you're not busy now, if you have lots of time, eventually you won't. Eventually, busyness will catch up with you because it's the way our world works. So implementing the practice of the Sabbath now can place you in a position that resists burnout. It resists the temptation of exhaustion. So I hope that you've taken a chance to practice Sabbath sometime over the past three weeks. If not, don't worry. Start this week. Take even an hour or two uh, this Sunday, this Saturday, to put your phone down, go for a walk, read a piece of scripture, talk to Jesus, uh, and you'll be amazed how you feel afterwards. So this week is our practice week. And instead of small groups, we're going to break into three different breakout rooms, almost like a mini seminar. And you are going to be able to pick which room you want to be in. So they're going to last 20 minutes and you're going to get to dive into these practices. Um, Room number one is going to equip you with a practice called Lectio Divina. And you will learn how to prayerfully walk through a passage of scripture. Uh, And this room will be great for those of you who are struggling to know what you're supposed to do when you're taking time off. What do you do when you're not on your phone? This is what you can do in the Bible. And Jesus will speak to you through this. Breakout room number two is going to be a discussion on how we can prepare for the Sabbath well. We're going to talk about what we need to do the day before. Things like homework or chores uh, or errands that you need to run so that you can take a guilt-free Sabbath. And you can actually rest well on your Sabbath without worrying about the list of things that haven't got done. And the last room is designed for those of you who just need rest today. Uh, We're going to put on some background music and you're going to be invited to pray, to read your Bible, to journal, to play guitar. Do whatever it is that inspires worship and is restful to you. We're going to ask that you have your cameras on in that room just that we can all be accountable to each other and not going on our phones and taking time away from those distractions. So that's it for me this week. Uh, Let's go into our breakout rooms.